Hey geeks, today it's all about getting our hands dirty again. So today we will code um, Bayesian optimization in a holistic view with my favorite package, Bowtorch from Facebook AI. Props to you guys, it's an awesome package, I love it. So we will really have this overview today and make one optimization loop running in total. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and like it and always stay up to date because there will be a lot of videos following regarding single parts which we won't cover in detail today in the next videos. So let's get started coding. Um, I already prepared some lines of code which is only on one side the import statements that we will need later. So torch will be required for data pre-processing, plotly for plotting and numpy to do the calculations. I prepared a target function. So this will later be a wrapper around the problem that you want to solve. It's always getting a list of lists inside as a torch tensor, um, which can include one or several inputs. And it always returns a torch tensor inside. As you see here, I just uh, put a mathematical function. You can replace this later by your problem if you do hyperparameter tuning or whatever. Um, let me execute it and I will just show you how this one looks like. It's a really simple function because it's an example. So we have one input value and one KPI that we want to optimize today. Um, and it's this function and how it looks like. So the first thing I want to show you today is what kind of data do we need for input of Bowtorch? Um, afterwards, I will show you how you do initial data set, um, initial sampling. In the next step, I then will show you how you get based on this initial sampling, the next sampling point, so an optimization run, one iteration. And the last step, I then show you how you automate this to have a complete optimization loop. So let's get started. What we first need is always some train. I call them always train x data. So the data we need and based on them, we train the, the regressors, the Gaussian process regressors and based on which then we get a new iteration point. So for now, I'm just going to make a random data set, which will look like this. So you see here, it's a torch tensor. Uh, area of arrays, we have only one input, that's why it looks like this. Um, we then get the exact objective. So what is it actually, What based on these different inputs, how um, does my output look? And therefore, I just call this target function here and pass the train x that we just generated. And super important here, we need to use the unsqueeze command that the array is always flattened. Um, so it is also in the Bowtorch tutorials always this way, um, because today I'm going to show you for single objective optimization. For multi-objective, there's another video following. So as you see here, based on this input, we get these output values here. And the last thing we actually need is for Bowtorch, we need a thing that is called like the best values that we that we observed. So for this, we are going to do a maximum thing because this function is to be maximized, forgot to say it. Um, so let's call it best observed value. And therefore we just take the exact object and we can just do the max op the max function and put item. So based on this, sorry, I didn't plot it. Um, we will get one value, which is actually, as you can see here, the best because it's the maximum value. So this is the data we need for Bowtorch. One time the training data that Bowtorch can train the model and of course the relying output data based on all the samples we have already and for the model training as well, max point. Because this is normally, yeah, not that trivial just to loop over it. Um, I always define a initial 
data function. So let's call it generate initial data. And what it does, it takes the amount of points we want to generate. So I call it n here. You can call it whatever you want. Let's say 10 by default. Um, and normally, uh, if you want to do it more generic, you can also say how many inputs does your problem have because we know our function, uh, we don't need it. Um, and what we do here is exactly what we did before here in the loop. So I can just uh, copy this, this one here down, call it try x, stay consistent. And instead of this 10 here, we put the n. Um, then in the next step, um, we copy the next function. So calling the target function is uh, equivalent. And here, sorry, I'm lazy today. So that's why I'm just copy pasting. Um, and the best observed value then is obviously this one. And what we need to return, here's all three of them, because as I said before, they are all three important. So we return all the three of them. So that's the generate initial data. So when I call this function now, I'm really lazy, I'm copying everything, saying I want 20 initial data points. That's what we get. Input data, 20 of them, output data, the magic ones, and uh, the max value. Cool, so when this is done, we have a function to generate initial data. You can set this depending how many iterations you have. You can put this bigger or smaller. It's a hyperparameter to play around with. Um, so the next thing is now based on this, I want to show you now how you can use Bowtorch to get a first optimization iteration. So based on the initial data you have, how do you get now the next sampling point by the Bowtorch package? Um, to do so, I always, we have now a beautiful function, which is, gives us initial data for X and the matching Y. And it also gives us the best init Y value. So we can just uh, call this function here again, as we did before. And yeah, let's set the initial data to 20 again. Uh, it's a beautiful value. Um, another thing we always need to set um, is the bounds of your problem. So normally it's also just a torch tensor as I do here. And what you do is really simple. So, sorry. You just say, what is the lower bound of your problem? So you have a list of lists for each input, which is one here. So simple, but for each input, we put something and in a list and for each output, we put something in this list. This can be zero, sorry, this can also be zero. If you have more than one input, let's say you have a second input, which goes between one and 10, you would do it this way. Um, important, normally it doesn't matter if it's into or float, but I always fit in, so. But in our case, we only have one input variable, so the bounds look like this. The next thing now we need to do, and now it's starting actually to uh, get interesting, we are using Bowtorch to train a model. So we need a Gaussian process regressor. So from Bowtorch.models, what we have, um, we import the single task Gaussian process regressor and the model is GP. Um, what we then do is from GPyTorch. Um, GPyTorch is also, sorry, is also a package that is automatically installed when Bowtorch is installed. This is actually a model where the Gaussian process regressors are trained, also based on PyTorch. Um, we need to, sorry, I need to look this one up here. Um, livelihood. Let, let's hope that I, that I don't make mistakes later. Um, working. Okay, I did no mistakes. So we need these ones to train the model. 
um, with GPyTorch we train the model, the rest is both helps to aggregate the models in Bowtorch. Um, so now we have a single model. In our case, we need because we only have one KPI. Um, we can take the single task GP and we need just to just to pass in it X and in it Y to the thing. Um, and what we need as well, I call it MML here, is um, we need to use this class, exact marginal log likelihood, because this is super important for uncertainty quantification that um, we actually, yeah, have the likelihood. So of this single model, it has a subclass called uh, likelihood, easy to uh, understand. And we need to pass the model as well. Yeah. Doesn't make so much sense for me because I think we could just pass uh, only the model. But if you do hyperparameter tuning, you can make these things much more complex. You will see the documentation also in the comments. So you can also pass different likelihoods and different models uh, to calculate things or several models. Uh, that's why it's built up like this. Um, now we have this done, we have the model in place. And the next thing we do is fitting the model. So therefore we need Bowtorch again. And we have this fit, it's actually called fit GPyTorch, sorry, torch model. And yeah, now we just uh, use it. Um, to fit the model. So we don't need to set a new parameter because the model itself has um, already the likelihoods inside, the weights and so on. So this function is setting them within this uh, variable. So we just call the function. Um, that's what we get out of here. So you can take a look. I won't go in detail now. And now that we have this, so we have now the Gaussian process regressor model. And the next thing we need is we only want to use this model, right, to get a next sample point where we should sample. So what we need now, and that's where actually Botor just doing its real work, is we use the acquisition function that is used in Bayesian optimization. I mean, there are several ones, right, or a lot of different ones. You can implement your own ones here. Uh, but I will just uh, take a pre-built one. So acquisition, let's take Monte Carlo. It's uh, always kind of good. And we take the expected improvement. Uh, you should all, if you, if you saw my theory video, you should know this one. Um, it's uh, one of the most common acquisition functions. But as I said, you can also build them on your own. So let's initialize this class. And we just need to pass to this class now the model, which is our single model. Ah, damn it. It's our single model. And we need to pass the best evaluation so far. This is a parameter depending what you do in optimization. If you have a not noisy problem, always put the real value. If you have noise inside, there are other models you can use. I probably need to do a own video about it, um, that you use a function and a model um, that the best F is not needed or required, but normally we just take the one that we got here, so we initialize this class um, and what we now need to do in the last step is we have an acquisition function now and as you know, the last step in Bayesian optimization is optimize the acquisition function and tell me where to sample next. And that's what we do in the last step. So we have this optim subclass here, import optim. Let's see, ah, has an autocomplete, good to know. Um, we have this function and now we want to get the candidates for it. They also return some other stuff, which is not important. That's why um, I'm putting this subline here. 
Um, doesn't need to bother you if you're interested in you find everything in the docs, but for optimizing it's not required. Um, so let's optimize this function. What we need is we need to tell it what is the acquisition function. That's here our class that we initialized already. We need to tell the bounds that we had in the beginning. We need to have a Q value. I always like it's the amount of candidates you want to have re returned. Um, we have two hyperparameters. I normally have them default as 200, the number of restarts and the number of raw samples um, on 512. Um, this is really, these are hyperparameters. You may tune them. This is only how often it restarts based on raw samples to find a thing because within this optimization acquisition function, there's another optimization running which needs to be hyperparameter tuned. But because model evaluations are cheap, you normally um, can just take uh, yeah higher values and it should be fine. Um, and the last thing we have also options. Um, they are also not uh, not mandatory, but I like to use them. Um, it's yeah, it's even more hyperparameters. So don't mind if you don't want to use them. Um, we have batch limit. Um, I use it by default. It's just because I have good experiences with it um, of five. And um, <clears throat> another thing that is max iter, um, which I also, I set it by default, right? So the upper ones I can tell you, you can put them big here. I just played a bit around. They were working out good. And that's also the ones that are in documentation. So that's why I always put them inside. Um, I probably need to also dive deeper to tell you exactly what it does. So candidates now should be a list. A list, in this case, we want one candidate of, so a list of one candidate saying where to sample next. So you see it takes already a while. So this is not computationally cheap as other things. So also if I go here, up, for example, say to this amount and let's set Q to 10, you will see it will take some amount of time and even some warning sometimes, um, which is not good, but um, it works. So these are the next 10 points that he recommends me. For now, we just want one, so we keep it this way. So this was the second part. I recap, in the first part you learned how to do the initial sampling. In the second part, you learned how based on this initial sampling with a mandatory, you get with these five steps, you get one single iteration for BISOP. So you train the GPyTorch regressor, you have an acquisition function that you define, and there are tons of it, right? I mean, I take the most basic ones because normally they work fine and they're easier to understand but you can play around, has a lot of documents about uh, documentation about it. And in the last step, you then really use the optimize acquisition uh, inbuilt function to get a list of candidates where to sample next. The last step we now need to have is we need to build this in a function. So all these steps that we have here now needs to be included in a function that we then just can do a loop over it and have a complete Bayesian optimization. So that's the last thing I'm going to do. As you know me, I'm lazy. So I'm going to copy here a bit. I call it generate next points because, uh, yeah, we can, as you saw, uh, as you saw, we can have more than one point. Um, and you see here in the variables that I pass everything. Uh, let's pass this first that I pass everything that I passed before already as well, um, the or that I created before as well, right? And uh, also how many points do we actually want to get as next points because yeah, this can be more than one as you saw. This is the function and now the copy paste game begins. So what we first need um, is 
this is what we give to the function, as you see. So the first two things actually are here. I see already that I did the naming wrong. Let's uh, make it the same way. I save time. Why? And it takes, okay. Single model, looks fine. Um, as a next step then, let's fit the model here inside this function. And then let's initialize our class for the expected improvement. Um, as you see here, also here need to adjust the name. Yeah, so I'm just lazy. That's uh, why I'm, I'm doing it this way. Um, okay, so you see, actually, it's not a lot of code when we break it down. Um, and the last thing here, then this beauty here and what we need to do in this case is the num the variable we need to set is number of points it's not one but it's this variable we put in and what we return is candidates so let's see if this function actually works i mean we can just take all of them because we initialized them before and just see if we get something. I mean, remember we initialized all of them here, so they exist already. And let's say we want two points. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Some warning. And you see it's working out fine. So it's not that much code and actually the parameters you can tune are not that many as well. So feel free to play around. It's getting more tricky, as I said, when you want to have here different ones because you have a problem with noise or whatever. Um, but for now, this doesn't matter. So now that we have this function, the last thing we actually need to do to have a whole optimization in place is initialize data, then have a loop, which loops over these functions for a number of uh, runs that we want. So we first define the number of runs now that we want to have. I call it n runs in this case. So let's put it 10 because we don't want to wait too long. Um, and what we do afterwards is actually exactly what we already did before. So we just call um, the generate initial data function with, yeah let's say 20, it will be more or less the same data as before, new generated. Um, we need to definite uh, the bounds, which is a torch tensor at you, as you learned before. I could have also copied that, sorry. Um, but now I'm already there. So let's go. And now all we need to do is make a loop. And in this loop, what we actually do is first we let's print out of optimization run. Then we get new candidates. So you know that function we defined defined it before, so we use this function here. What we pass is of course, in it x, in it y, and the best in it y, and the bounds. Mm, for this case, we only want to have one sample, one new candidate. Of course, this can we can err this. Um, then new results is then that we call the target function, and we pass in new candidates. Super important here is that we unsqueeze as we did uh, up uh, before as well, unsqueeze the results. Otherwise the error has one layer too much, one dimension too much. Cool. So actually now we can already print something out and see mm, saying say it's R will only be one. So actually it's candidate, but I just keep it generic. And 
what we now need to do actually is um, that we and here we can also say yeah no we just want to see what is the new candidate here what we now need to do is we need to have the nlx put the new results inside so we use the torch uh, cat command um, and we append uh, and it x and new candidates and we do the same for and it y so for the results um, which will end then in an array containing all the new candidates or all init candidates plus the new ones so you see it will over each loop grow by one in this case and the same for the results just that we have all thing and then the, the best point um we call it here best init x i know the variable name is not um not valid anymore actually but just to keep it simple i will stay like this now init y dot max as we did before upstairs already items and now we also print print it out best point performs this way so cool this should be it this is the whole loop this is the Bayesian optimization loop and let's run it whoop okay it's always uh, a bit risky if you run code uh, after you wrote a lot if it's running so um, bup, 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 best in it. Um, let's see again. I'm not sure. Yeah, now it's working. As you see here, this is the next point that should be uh, evaluated. This is the next one you can see here. The first loops there's no improvement at the moment actually a fourth one uh, neither finally here is a point where we now improve and now you can see converging not getting better here as well the run before it was a bit more beautiful but you have some Bayesian optimization right i mean this also depends now on a lot of factors if i rerun it let me put 16 runs perhaps the conversion is better uh, it really depends also on the initial sampling so especially when you have only so few amount of points um, initial sampling is really crucial but you see it is really similar to before so it's always good to have it more or less reproducible and that it doesn't look different when you run it twice um, because acquisition function shouldn't change and the initial data points are always the same and yeah so this was a good overview of Bayesian optimization. You see each of these steps, you can actually do a lot of different things. Um, and there's a lot of potential probably tuning it more. Um, for my showcase, it's now a bit, uh, a bit sad to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's about the loop. You saw how it works and uh, I hope it helps you in one or another problem to get cool results and uh, to play around with it. Nice! We made it together. We made one whole optimization loop running. So I would be now interested in which of the single parts that we took a look like just in general you would like to have a deeper deep dive in. Is it the acquisition function or is it rather the Gaussian process regressors itself or the optimization in the end? Let me know in the comments what you would like to see in the next video and until then keep optimizing.